C'est fabuleux ce qui s'est passé. What happened in September 2015 is fabulous. It's the first time that humankind agreed that every country agreed on a common project. It agreed after several years of negotiations around 17 Sustainable Development Goals defined, but the agreement does not necessarily define how these goals could be reached. So there are still a number of open questions. On the whole, if you look at the fantastic result of this, uh, there are three possible postures that are often different. Some say that the SDGs are totally unreachable uh, and contradictory, uh, so that in any case it must be left aside. Others say we've seen these types of agendas emerge, why don't we just uh, sit down, uh, keep a low profile and wait uh, for the next summit or the next agreement. And the third category, and I think we belong to that category, say that the legitimacy of the agreement creates an obligation. And this third position says, yes, it will be tough. Yes, it will be complicated. Yes, we're not sure it'll work. But we have a transformative utopia, a framework for change, which we have all agreed upon. Why don't we work as hard as we can to reach these goals? And when I say that I belong to this uh, position, you understand why. And what I've just said is that the SDGs and the Agenda for 2030 uh, for Sustainable Development are a transformative utopia in the sense that it's a project for the future, a project of transformation for the future, which the whole world has agreed upon. Our, our whole species has agreed upon. There are a number of messages that can be inferred from that. And the first I would like to share with you is that of the very deep change in uh, values in this transformation. I would identify four types of values which are implicitly and explicitly explicitly focused upon in the accord and which we need to bear in mind. The first is this transformative utopia that needs to be based on respect for human rights and the gradual affirmation since 1948, since the Universal Declaration of Human Rights the affirmation of notions of rights in uh, the organization of uh, each and everyone's life. The second one is an, um, to display a number of principles uh, in satisfying a number of needs, needs of individuals, uh, but also needs of uh, communities or countries or the planet and also the future generations and satisfying, fulfilling these needs is also um, a very important aspect of the Accord. The third is the uh, attention given to vulnerable populations, not only through charity, but to acknowledge that leaving people on the side of the road is negative for society and humankind as a whole. And the fourth value is that of the common good the common property and uh, the use of that to the benefit of everyone. So what I'm now going to share with you is, uh, of course, uh, a respect for uh, human rights, satisfaction of our needs and those of future generations, priority for vulnerable populations, and the common, uh, common property of common goods. And these SDGs, in a sense, define uh, an objective, a target, but not necessarily the path that needs to be followed to reach uh, these targets. So there are a number of criteria and goals, but there is no definition of the multiple ways in which we can achieve these goals. And of course, transformation means action, and action 
particularly in situations that are the most complex, uh, may evoke something that might be technically difficult, uh, financially costly, and politically risky, as uh, Serge Mikhailov said elsewhere. So, this question of the path that needs to be followed, and I wouldn't call it a, a route map, but the, the question of the orientation uh, will force us to be creative. And then third message I would like to share with you, between, among these 17 objectives, these 17 goals, there are plenty of interactions, multiple interactions. It's not just a sum of 17 SDGs. I think it's first and foremost the connection between these various goals. First of all, there are a number of contradictions. It's full of contradictions. Even each individual goal has its own internal contradictions. Let me just give you an example. The Gagiro of uh, the French Development Agency often, uh, often talks about it's uh, almost impossible that if we continue to use the same type of growth that we will provide reliable and sustainable energy to everyone while fighting climate change. Second contradiction, it's a, more of a synergistic contradiction. Um, SDG 1 uh, aims to eradicate poverty, SDG 2 aims to eradicate malnutrition. We can obviously see there that there's a synergy and a very powerful powerful connection between hunger and poverty, and the fact that uh, the goals, that these uh, goals are, of course, uh, interconnected. You can also connect that to Sustainable Development Goal 3, which is health. And one can easily accept today that the question of malnutrition has probably become the number one problem of public health globally. And third type of interaction between the various objectives, uh, the leverage of that uh, can be imagined between actions, transforming the food system, I'm not just talking about farming here or ranching, will probably allow us both to uh, address the SDG 2, but also SDG 12, production consumption, SDG 13, about the climate, 15, about the health of ecosystems, SDG 3, about health, and I could uh, list uh, the SDGs that are all concerned by issues of food systems. Fourth message, it's directly connected to the previous one. If there are interactions and contradictions, potentially, if there is interdependence, there are also tensions. And these tensions cannot be resolved spontaneously. Uh, there are trade-offs, there are agreements, there are mechanisms implemented, particularly on the political level, to uh, achieve these trade-offs. They're sometimes very painful uh, because uh, you need to give up certain things. And my fifth message is also connected to that. It concerns trade-offs more specifically between what happens locally and what happens globally. The implementation of SDGs will rely on local implementation largely, and what, but what happens internationally will not only be the result of a, a change of scale or a replication of what works in another place, it would also call upon trade-offs, not only to amplify uh, the local momentum, but also to create frameworks to stimulate other scales, particularly the political scale, and also to have a number of trade-offs there, because what is good locally is not necessarily good globally. If you look at SDG 2 and hunger, you can easily resolve the question of hunger locally, but uh, have a negative influence globally on the climate. Uh, that is a, one example among many others. So the trade-off between local and global, the trade-off between 
and various aspects that are contradictory and that can be done through the partnerships and, and the involvement of stakeholders and policy makers, that's a beautiful challenge and it's a, a wonderful path that lies ahead and that is why I personally uh, think that it's a transformative utopia.